Hello everyone, in case you don't know me, I'm Peter from Grace Community Church in Eden Bridge and today I'm going to be talking through a part of Mark chapter 8 following our series on Mark. Before I do that, I just wondered if you've ever played that game where somebody writes a name of somebody, like a character from a book or a real person or a cartoon character and sticks it on your forehead. You then have to guess who that character is by asking a series of questions like, am I still alive? Or am I a historical character? Or am I a person? Am I a male? Am I a female? And so on and so on. If the answer is yes, you get to answer, ask more questions. If it's no, then it goes on to the next person. It's quite a fun game. Uh, we've been playing it for years um, when my side of the family have got together before Christmas usually. It's actually quite hard um, unless you have Postman Pat because Postman Pat has been turning up at this game for at least 10 years and we kind of got used to the questions and the answers to if you've got Postman Pat on your forehead. Brings me um, thinking about the passage in Mark 8 where Jesus is asking the disciples who people think he is and who they think he is as well. And it reminds me that um, our society is quite individual, individualistic, sorry about that. Um, and we are often encouraged to find out who we are. Whereas as Christians, we know that the most important thing is who Jesus is. Once we know who Jesus is, then we can tell other people about Jesus and we can develop in our faith. So at this point in the gospel story, Mark is describing how the disciples are starting to ask each other who Jesus really is. And Jesus puts a question to them. So let's read that. This is Mark 8, verse 27 to 34. Jesus and his disciples went on to the village around villages around Caesar, Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah and others still one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked say I am. Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. I do feel sorry for Peter here. It just recognised that Jesus was the Messiah and declared it and probably was feeling quite proud of himself, I would imagine. But then Jesus calls him Satan. To put this in context, many Jews believed that an anointed leader, similar to King David, who ruled around a thousand years before, would come and rule again. Some obviously believed that he would come at the time when Jesus was around to free God's people from the Roman occupation. In the Old Testament, God told the prophet Samuel to anoint David as king. He put oil on David's head as a sign of God's blessing. So when Peter declared that Jesus is the Messiah or the Christ, he was correct. In fact, the word Christ and the word Messiah have the same meaning, the first is from a Greek word and the second is from a Hebrew word. 
the meaning is the anointed one. So when we talk about Jesus Christ, um, we're not, as some people might think, saying Jesus is first name and his surname. What we're actually saying is we're giving Jesus his title, Jesus the anointed one. Peter probably had the idea that Jesus was someone who was soon going to lead an uprising against the Romans and become the next king of Israel. He had his own ideas about Jesus. He was no doubt shocked by what Jesus said about being killed. It looks like he might have missed the bit about three days rising again. So poor old Peter starts turning Jesus off, but of course Jesus realises or understands that Peter has got that completely wrong. When Jesus was in the desert, he was tempted by the devil and resisted the devil. And here's Peter coming up with this idea that Jesus was going to be some fantastic king. He was a fantastic king, but not in the way that Jesus thought. So Jesus says to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Now, the passage raises the same question for us, doesn't it? Who do we think Jesus is? When I was in my teens, I used to enjoy a rock band called Jethro Tull. Still do listen to it occasionally. Um, there's a song uh, that they used to sing called Wind Up. And it's directed to the lead singer's old headmaster and generally to the re religious establishment at the time. It's talking about the shallow sort of Christianity that he had experienced and unfortunately many other people have experienced in the past. Particularly when I talk to some of the older people that I deal with have been put off Christianity by the hypocritical nature of so-called Christians. I'll just read you a line or a couple of lines from this song, Wind Up. It says, before I'm through, I'd like to say my prayers. I don't believe you. It's directing this to his headmaster. You had the whole damn thing wrong. It's not the kind you have to wind up on Sundays. So there's an idea about Jesus that people had. You wind him up and then you can put him away during the week and, and pay no further attention to him. And you can see why that would have put people off looking into the claims of Jesus. Now, when I first met Julia, my wife of some 32 years, I wanted to find out more about her. What did she think about things? What did she enjoy? What did she dislike? What had she done in the past? What's she thinking about for the future? And it's the same when you and I met Jesus. Who is he? We wanted to know more and more about him. Well, at least I hope you did. Now, people who have been married for years may know their spouse very well, but there's always still more to find out, I've found. <laughs> and we may have known Jesus for a long time, may have been Christians for a long time, or we may have only just met him. But there's always more to find out. That's one of the exciting things about being a Christian. Now we have the whole Bible to read more about him, the Old Testament and the New Testament, which the disciples didn't have, obviously. And there are lots of descriptions of him. Also, there are some hymns and worship songs that help us know more about Jesus. One example came to mind when I was preparing this Talk, but there are many others. I'm sure you have your, your own ideas. Here's a song, here are the, the words to a song called Jesus and Messiah, which we may have heard earlier. It says, He became sin who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing, love so amazing. Jesus, Messiah name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. 
And if you're already a Christian, Peter, remember, who mucked it up a bit, as he seems to do every now and again in the Bible, in his um, letter, 1 Peter, he encourages us to always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. And part of that answer is that we need to be able to say who Jesus is. Now, the, one of the things which helped me become a Christian, in fact, it was a big thing, was the Alpha course. And in that course, there's a whole session entitled, Who is Jesus? And one of the quotes that they uh, put into that, that session is from C.S. Lewis, who wrote the Narnia books, you know, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and all that. And it, I think it's a great quote. And I'm just going to read that out to you before I finish. It says, I'm trying here to prevent anyone saying the really foolish thing that people often say about Jesus. And that is, I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. And Lewis says, that is the one thing that we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things that Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on the level of the man who says he's a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else a madman or something worse. So I hope you've um, come with me in this little uh, passage here and thought about who Jesus really is. And if you're a Christian, be ready with that answer because others will start looking to us more and more as things decline in a, this crisis at the moment. I'd like to encourage you to pray. I'm running out of time now, but please do pray. Uh, that Jesus will be known more and more to you and to the church and that we'll be able to tell others about him as well. Thank you.